Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. For the last couple of years, we've been talking about self-hosting using Docker and uh, reverse proxies and domain names and all kinds of stuff uh, so that we can uh, basically self-host whatever we want to self-host within reason for the most part. One of the things that of course we want to make sure that we have is a good solid uptime for those services when we're talking about hosting websites or password managers or, or whatever the case is. And in a previous video that I made a few months ago, we talked about uh, setting up a service called Uptime Kuma as a, a way to monitor our services to make sure that we get a notification if one of those services goes offline. Now, uh, one could argue that if your network goes down and your Uptime Kuma instance is on your local network, uh, it won't have any way to notify you. Uh, maybe your internet's gone down, maybe your server's shut off, whatever the case is. So in this video, I actually want to revisit Uptime Kuma, but what I want to do is actually uh, show you how to set this up on Linode so that you've got a remote uh, monitoring system that will ping your different uh, URLs and things like that. Uh, of course, now the thing to keep in mind here is that this will uh, only uh, be able to monitor services that are that are public facing. Uh, you're not going to be able to monitor uh, internal services, um, but mostly we want to focus on the, the public facing services, uh, things that we would want to be able to access, again, password managers, websites, things like that, uh, when we're out and about doing our daily lives. And that's why uh, I'm stoked that uh, Linode has partnered with me on on this. They're actually uh, sponsoring this video. Uh, be sure to check out the description down below where you'll find uh, how you can get $100 free to check out Linode for 60 days. Um, so let's jump over to Linode and get this thing set up. So here we are on our Linode dashboard. Uh, the first thing I want to do is come up here and click on Create Linode. Uh, what I want to do next actually is come over here to Marketplace and scroll down to where we see Docker right there. And then once we've clicked that, we can scroll down. Um, and really what we can do is minimize all of that. Uh, as far as the Docker options, we don't need to deal with any of that at this point. Uh, we're gonna select an image. I'm gonna use Debian 10 because it's the most uh, current version of their system that's up and running. Uh, for your region, uh, I like to choose something that's close to me. Um, it may not matter, but in this case, I like to choose something close to me. Uh, Dallas is the closest, so I'm gonna do that. And then because we're not really dealing with a lot of traffic here, we're just gonna set up the occasional ping, basically. Um, I'm gonna actually switch from dedicated CPU uh, to shared CPU. And really, um, you could probably go with the one gigabyte option. Uh, I'm going to click on the two gigabyte option just for the sake of testing this thing out. Uh, again, you're gonna get a hundred bucks free to check out Linode uh, by visiting the, the link in the description down below. So you've got some time to check this out and see if the one gigabyte or the two gigabyte works best for you. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down a little further here. I'm gonna give this a label. I'm gonna call this um, up time kuma, if I could type demo like so. I'm going to enter a root password. We have to have one of those. And then I'm going to go ahead <clears throat> um, uh, and I don't I don't actually have an SSH key on <laughs> this machine. There have been a lot of changes here uh, to the studio recently and uh, I don't have SSH set up on the or an SSH key rather set up on this. I'll deal with it later. Uh, we're just going to use a root password for the sake of this. Uh, you could do backups if you wanted to, that's completely up to you. Uh, I'm also gonna do a private IP because that uh, doesn't have an additional charge on it. Um, and then once we're happy with everything that we've selected here, what I'm gonna do is scroll down and click on Create Linode. So we'll give this just a couple of minutes to spin up. Uh, it's gonna go through a, a, a boot process and all of this stuff. And then once, uh, once it's past all of that, once it's up and running, uh, then we can actually get logged in and get Uptime Kuma set up uh, via Docker and then do some configuring so that we know that we're getting uh, the notifications that we want to get. Okay, so it says that our Linode is up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click right over here where it says SSH access. I'm gonna copy that. Uh, and then I'm going to bring this up. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just, uh, no. So, and then I'm gonna just make this bigger. I'm gonna right click, uh, I'm gonna press return. This is saying, hey, you've never connected to the server. Are you sure? Uh, yes, I am. So I'm gonna press that and then I'll enter my password. Now, of course, if you had uh, an SSH key set up on your machine and you configured that this would work, wouldn't be an issue. Just something to keep in mind there. So go ahead and press enter. All right, so now what I wanna do is let's let's clear my screen with Control L with a Docker PS. Okay, so just because it's up and running doesn't mean it's actually fully up and running. So we'll give this a couple more minutes to kind of settle in and do what it needs to do. And then once it comes back, um, I will uh, show you the rest of this process.
Okay, so after just uh, really, it was like 30 seconds. Uh, it looks like uh, Docker is up and running. Here we can see uh, that we've got our container ID, image, command, created, status, ports, names, columns. There's nothing in there because, well, there's nothing in there yet. So uh, let's go ahead and get uh, Uptime Kuma deployed so that we can actually populate some of those columns. Okay, so what we can do is either come over here to hub.docker.com uh, and we can get some more information about this. I will have links to all of this in the description down below. So you've got some different options on how you want to deploy this. Uh, if we scroll down, uh, we can uh, we, we can see that there are uh, some different uh, commands that we could run here if we wanted to do that. Uh, or if we come over here to uh, the GitHub repository, there's also a, a Docker Compose version here that we can use as well. Uh, either of those will work just fine, however you wanna handle that. Uh, I think though, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this, um, but I'm gonna modify it just a little bit. Uh, so basically, let's, can I do this? Nope, nope, nope. So it's gonna be docker run detach restart always. It's gonna be in port 3001. Our volume, we're gonna mount this to home slash docker slash uptime dash kuma uh, on our local machine, on our actual Linode. Uh, inside the container, it's going to map that to app slash data. Uh, the name of the container will be uptime kuma. This is the uh, the image that we're gonna use and we're gonna use version number one. Uh, it looks like there. Um, you know what, Let's let's switch that to, let's see here. Base Debian, you know, let's switch that uh, dot one to uh, latest, like so. So we've got Docker uh, run detached restart always port 3001, uh, volume home Docker uh, uptime Kuma, and then uh, our, our Docker container name will be uptime Kuma. And then we're gonna use the uh, Lewis Lamb uptime Kuma latest uh, option here. So I'm gonna copy that. Uh, then I'm going to uh, come over here, right click and press enter. Since it's unable to find it, so it's gonna go ahead and pull everything. Um, and then once it's done pulling and extracting and deploying and all of this stuff, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so now it is up and running in theory. So let's uh, let's come back over to here. Let's grab this IP address and let's put port 3001 on there. And here is our dashboard. Now, the first thing it wants us to do is actually create an admin account. Uh, you're only going to have one account on here, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna call this DB Tech. And I've entered my password twice. Now I'm gonna click on create. Okay, so here we are. We are logged in, we're ready to go. The first thing we wanna do uh, is come up here to the top and click on settings and then go to notifications and set up a notification. Um, you've got several different options on how you want, to, how you could do this, whether it's email, Email, if you wanna use email on Linode, you will have to set up a, or send in a ticket in order to get uh, the, the correct email port, whether it's 25, 465 or 587 uh, unre un unrestricted from your account. But, um, so I'm not gonna do email on Linode, but <clears throat> I think what I am gonna do, let's come over here to D Discord. Uh, and then I'm gonna go into my Discord account. All right, so here we are, we're on uh, Discord here. Uh, what I wanna do is come down to here. I wanna right click, I wanna go to server settings, integrations, and then I want to create a webhook. Uh, I, I, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna create a new webhook. Channel um, is just going to be, tell you what, I'm just gonna put it in a bot commands there. I'm gonna call this um, 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 uptime, uptime, like so. I'm gonna copy the webhook URL like so, and then click Save Changes. And then I'm gonna paste that in there. Um, I'm gonna give it a bot display name of Uptime Kuma. A prefix custom message, um, hey, like so. Uh, default enabled, uh, apply on all existing monitors and click Save. And then let's actually uh, verify that this works and click Test. Tested was successfully. Let's, uh, let's exit here. Bot commands, hey, my Discord bot alert. Testing, it worked. Great, so now we actually have a notification system in place using Discord. Of course, you could use Telegram or whatever you wanted to use. This is just kind of a demonstration on how to uh, get Discord set up for notifications. So what we're gonna do <clears throat> is uh, we're just gonna go ahead and close this. Now I wanna come up here to the top left and click on add new monitor. Um, you've got a lot of different options on how you can handle this, whether it's an HTTP request, uh, a TCP port, you can ping something, uh, HTTP keywords, DNS push, Steam game server. I'm just gonna do HTTP here. Uh, I'm gonna call this uh, dbtech, 
and then dbtch.com. Uh, the heartbeat interval, uh, this says every 60 seconds by default. That's pretty aggressive. However, if you've got mission critical infrastructure, uh, whether it's a password manager or website or whatever the case may be, every 60 seconds may be reasonable. Um, so you could leave this at 60, you could change it to like five minutes, which would of course would be 300. However you wanna do that, I'm just gonna leave it at 60 seconds. Um, retries, how many retries do you want before a notification is sent? Um, you know what, let's, I'm gonna leave that at zero. Uh, heartbeat, how, how often do you want to retry? Um, <clears throat> advanced, do you want to ignore TLS, SSL errors? No, um, unless, unless you're running something insecure, which I don't recommend. Um, upside down mode, basically, uh, this will see if it's up. If it is up, it will let you know. Um, if, if it's supposed to be down and it comes up, it will let you know in, in this upside down mode. Maximum number of redirects, this is fine. The accepted status code is fine. Uh, basically 200 to 299 is, is the acceptable. Everything is up and running like you want it to. Um, and then you can categorize these with tags if you wanna do that. Uh, up here at the top, you can see uh, we've got a notification already set up here as the default. So we're good to go, we can click on save. And it looks like that is good to go. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that is, um, be because everything is up and working the way we want it to, uh, we're not gonna get a notification over here. However, if I disable uh, dbtech.com, if you're on here right now and the site goes down, this is why I apologize. So we're gonna hang out, we're gonna give this a second, uh, and hopefully uh, here in a moment, we will get a notification in our Discord here uh, that lets us know that our website is down. So uh, we'll wait a minute and come back and see if we've got a notification. And there it is, just that quickly. Uh, of course, I've got the website up down here where we can see it, but uh, right here is the notification that we got uh, in Discord. So I really, really like the way this looks. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll come back over here. I'm gonna re-enable, of course, I'm doing this off screen, um, but we're, we've re-enabled uh, dbtech.com. Uh, we'll wait a second, hopefully we'll get another notification letting us know that the service is back up. And there we go. <clears throat> we got kind of two notifications because I've, again, I've got the dashboard up. DB Tech is up 200 okay. And then also over here, uh, we've got uh, your service DB Tech is up. Everything is good to go there. Um, and of course, it's even got our little hey message there uh, where you could, you could deliberately tag somebody if you needed to do that. So now that we've got this up and running, we've got a notification. Uh, the other thing that we can do is, well, continue to add additional monitors uh, for, uh, for additional services. It's just kind of a rinse and repeat of, of the same steps that we went through a moment ago, setting up this service. And of course, Discord is up here uh, as the default notification. You could, of course, add additional notifiers if you wanted to do that and assign a different notifier to different containers, depending on how you want to be notified for each of those different containers. Um, but the, the, the process is kind of rinse and repeat for each of the, the public facing services that you want to monitor. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to monitor anything um, that isn't public facing using this setup. If you wanted to do that, of course, you would need uh, uptime Kuma is set up on your local server in order for that to happen. But again, uh, if your network goes down, if your internet service goes down, if your server goes down, you're less likely to get those notifications. So this is just kind of a, hey, uh, your, your public facing stuff is down. So hopefully that kind of helps clarify maybe a little bit of something I almost missed in my explanation there. Uh, but that is how to set up Uptime Kuma on Linode to monitor your uh, public facing services and get notifications in Discord. Of course, there are lots of different options for notifications, but of course, this was just one demonstration. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Of course, if you wanna give this a shot for yourself, check out the description down below where you'll find a link to get $100 in free credit for 60 days on Linode. Big shout out to Linode. Thanks for sponsoring this video. Really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.